Dr. S. Pradeep, what is the spectrum of cerebellar disorders? And thank you for sharing your lovely slides with us. Um, and please, could you take us through those? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kurana. Uh, so, the, at the outset, uh, the classification may look quite complex. But if we try to understand them based on certain anatomical uh, findings, it really isn't very complex and it's quite simple. So when we have a suspected malformation of the posterior fossa, the first major uh, broad classification which we would like to do is to see the cystina magna. So we would like to see whether there is a normal cystina magna or whether there's an enlarged cystina magna. So when there is a normal cystina magna, we come to the rare possibilities like cerebellar hypoplasia, contracerebellar hypoplasia, rhombin cephalosynapsis and vermian agenesis. Now we come to the other broad classification where we find that the cisterna magna is enlarged. Once we find that the cisterna magna is enlarged, we have to see whether there is a communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna. So that will be the next thing which we are going to do. So there are two possibilities. One is there is a communication between the fourth ventricle and cisterna magna and the other there is no communication. So if we have an enlarged cisterna magna and we do not find a communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna, then we consider mega cisterna magna as the possibility. If there is an enlarged cisterna magna and if there is a communication between the fourth ventricle and the cisterna magna, then we are dealing with Dandy Walker complex. Now, in the Dandy Walker complex, we need to see further. Now, once we look at Dandy Walker complex, now we need to concentrate on the vermis actually. So it is very important to image the vermis, which is possible in a true mid-sagittal plane or in a 3D reconstructed mid-sagittal plane. So in the vermis, we need to see whether the morphology of vermis is normal and whether the fastigium and the fastigial angle are normal. And also we need to look at the position of the tentorium or the torcular. Now, for example, we have made sure, we have seen that the cisterna magna is enlarged and we have seen that there is a communication between fourth ventricle and cisterna magna. In this situation, if the vermis fastigium are normal, if the tentorium is at the normal expected location, then we are dealing with a Blake spout cyst. Suppose the fastigium bar vermis is abnormal and the tentorium bar torcular is still normal, then we may be dealing with vermian hypoplasia. If the vermis fastigium are abnormal and the tentorium is elevated than its normal expected position, then we are dealing with a Dandy Walker malformation. So in order to make these things more simpler, we have certain line diagrams which I have drawn, which I will use to explain.